This is the city of Andia. I helped to plan and build this city with a bunch of friends, but when we started it, it was more of a learning experience. We had built cities together before, but when starting this city, we were just building on what we had learned when creating the previous city. I also made this video explaining the main components of a city, but it was more of a list of things to have and it didn't really show the very beginning. And of course, I got a lot of questions asking, how do you start? But I couldn't remember the answer because I hadn't started a new city in years. So today I will answer that question. Today I will walk you step by step through the little details that you might be stuck on when trying to start a brand new Minecraft city. Welcome to the island of Monstera. This won't be your typical Minecraft YouTube video either, because I create my best work when nobody is watching. Obviously, this is a huge problem as someone who needs to make videos to get enough ad revenue to pay my rent. So, if you'd like to help me pay my rent, if you'd click like, the YouTube algorithm will boost this video and help me reach more people who may also enjoy this content. Also, give me your money. Whoa, buddy, don't scare the audience away, please. I don't care, give me your money. I'm sorry, don't mind him. What he means to say is that we have a Patreon that gives you early access to videos and credit at the end of each video. So if you're interested in supporting the channel, then check out the link below. Every dollar will get me closer to being able to do this full time. I've been building in Minecraft for about 10 years. I've noticed that I've developed a bit of my own style while building, so I want to have a city theme that I'm relatively comfortable with, but I still need to have the flexibility to explore new ideas. Most of my inspiration comes from North America. That's where I live, that's where I grew up, and there's a lot of influence from Vancouver in my style, but I grew up on the East Coast, so I'm pretty familiar with Eastern Canada and sections of the Eastern US. For the theme of the city, it'll follow mostly Canadian architectural styles. The island that we will be building on is an island created in World Painter by my good friend who also developed the textures that we will be using. But before we talk about the terrain, let's talk about what we actually want our city to be. Vision statements are the glue that holds the city together. Here is the vision statement for the city of Monstera. Monstera is a walkable, realistic, sustainable city that was once car dependent, but has taken major steps to become a model city. There is a focus on people rather than vehicles and a respect for the natural environment. A key point when making a new city, do not bind yourself to a specific style if you find that you get new ideas frequently. This is why we have neighborhoods or districts. If you have a New York style neighborhood, but feel like making a mountain cabin, do not build the mountain cabin in the New York style neighborhood. This is like trying to build a Dunkin Donuts in Canada. The second you bring up the idea, you will be pelted with Timbits, and yes, I will be part of that crowd. Every time you want to build in a new style that does not fit your current area, start a new neighborhood elsewhere on the map, and you can deal with the road and rail connections later. I live in Canada, so I'm basing the island's climate on a more mild version of Canada's spring and summer. On our map, we have mountains on the west coast with steep hills that loop around to the south. I was chatting with a friend of mine who also happens to be a civil engineer and makes YouTube videos, but we were talking about how the west coast of the island is more likely to have greenery and rain because of the mountains. In terms of the amount of greenery, it's going to make it pretty different from the east coast. The reason for this is that if you have humid air that is pushed by the wind into a mountain, that air can't go anywhere else, so it goes up, it cools, it turns into a cloud, and then it rains. That's a big reason why it rains so much in Vancouver. But anyway, all that to say that it rains more on the west coast compared to the east. With this type of climate, there will be a lot of trees around the islands, and the greenery will make the city look and feel like a part of nature. Walkability will be one of the key components of this city. Combined with a great public transit network, it will be just as fast, if not faster, to take public transit compared to driving. The backstory behind the roads is that Monstera was developed similar to any other Canadian city, being relatively car dependent, but is making major strides away from personal vehicles. Terrain is a pretty important element of your city. There are a lot of people out there that are a lot better at creating terrain than I am, so I can't show you how to make your terrain, but I can give you nine general guidelines. If you're on Java, use World Painter. It is a free software and it's relatively easy to use. Keep your slope to less than 15 degrees for major city blocks and high rises. The higher the slope of your terrain, the more challenging it is to build. If you're having a hard time coming up with ideas, check out Google Maps or the Wikipedia page of a real life city and read up on the topography of the area. Make sure to leave room for your ideas. If you know that you want to build an airport, leave a large space open that you know will not interfere with the rest of your city. 
You can import your Minecraft world back into World Painter after you've already built your buildings, but it'll be in your best interest to get it right the first time before building. Be mindful of the scale of your terrain. If you're building a city on your own by hand, you probably won't want anything bigger than 1000 by 1000. But as you add building tools like World Edit, or even have some other people helping you build your city, you might consider going with a larger map size. I consider myself a relatively experienced builder, plus I have World Edit, so this island that I'm working with is around 4000 by 4000 blocks. I'm not planning on having the entire island covered with buildings, I want to have a lot of open green space as well. So, if you wanted to, this is something that you could also do. Make your terrain interesting. Include mountains, rivers, beaches, cliffs, and floodplains. Always remember, use your terrain to your advantage. Don't world edit out an entire mountain range just to put a downtown core. Approach difficult terrain as a challenge and an opportunity to improve your building skills. It will absolutely be more work than working with flat terrain, but even just slight inclines can make your city feel so much more real. If you're using World Painter, you can add custom trees and make large green spaces. I would highly recommend putting less greenery than you think you'll want, because if you end up wanting to build in a place where you already put a forest, removing trees cleanly becomes very difficult. Iterate through the terrain creation process. Export it, explore it in-game, and then go back into World Painter to adjust your terrain. So on our island, we have these giant mountains on the west coast, and then it slowly flattens out going towards the east. But when you look at this map from the top down, it looks like everything is flat except for the mountains. So now I'm going to show you a trick in World Painter to create two extra maps to help you plan your city. If you don't have access to World Painter or you just don't care, then skip to this timestamp. We are going to create an elevation map and a slope map in World Painter. Let's jump into World Painter and I'll give you a step-by-step -step tutorial. So go ahead and open your World Painter file, open your map, and then save it as a World Painter file. Now go ahead and close it. Go to your file explorer where you saved that file and create two backup copies of that file. So let's take our first copy and rename it to elevation. And let's rename the second one to slope. Once you've done that, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and open the elevation file. Basically what we're gonna do is we're going to cover your terrain at each elevation segment with different colors of wool. The size of these segments for your elevation will depend on how tall or flat your terrain is. If you just have a really flat island, then you can probably do like four or five. But for this map, we're gonna do something a little bit different. So by doing this, this is going to allow us to see our similar areas and help us visualize our terrain. It's also really going to help us plan our port so that ships don't get stuck in the shallow areas. I'll be referencing this map and the next one quite frequently while planning. Okay, so let's go over here and grab our sponge tool, change it to a thick square, and put the intensity up to 100. This next part is going to be pretty computer intensive, but you're going to go ahead and you're just going to drain all of the water out of the world. After you've finished doing that, go to your terrain tab, click the plus, create custom material, and you can name it whatever you want, but I'm gonna name mine 53-62. The reason I do this is because this is the interval that this is going to be at. For this world and most Minecraft worlds, the water is set at Y62, so 62 is the upper range for the water. So I'm gonna set the block ID to 35, which is wool, and a data value of three, which is going to give us light blue wool. I'm gonna go ahead and copy the new material name to make our life easier for the next steps, and then I'm gonna click OK. Click the plus, and we're going to follow the same process. Paste the old name, and then decrease each value by 10. Next, I'm going to go for 35, which is wool once again, and I'm going to change the data value to 9. This is going to give us cyan wool, and I'm going to click OK. Click the plus, create custom material, but I'm going to name this one less than or equal to 42. This means that our water from this point below is going to be at least 20 blocks deep. I'm not super familiar with big cargo ships, but I feel like 20 meters is pretty reasonable. And for this, we're going to do 35 and then set the data value to 11 so we get the navy blue wool. Then once you're done, just click OK. So that's for the water. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the terrain. So let's click the plus, and then we're just gonna repeat this process. We're going to use lime green wool, yellow, orange, and red. And then I'm just gonna increase it by increments of 29. Once you get to the very last layer, I'm gonna use red wool to signify anything that is greater than or equal to 152. Keep in mind that for any Java version before 1.18, it only goes up to 255. After you have your increments all ready to go, click the globe, click fill with terrain type, go to the drop down menu, and then scroll down to find your lowest value. Go over to the right and check at or above, check at or below, and change at or below to 42. 
Then from here, just click Go. Once that's all done, click the globe again, fill with terrain type, click your drop down menu, find the next one up. And in our case, that's going to be the Cyan 43-52. So we're doing the same thing as before. Just check both of those boxes, but make sure it's above 43 and below 52. So once you're all done, click go, and then just repeat this process for all of your layers. Just don't forget to input the right numbers. Once you have all of your layers in place, go to File, Export, Export as Image File, name it whatever you want, preferably something with the word elevation in it and then save it in a central place that you're gonna remember. Okay, so let's go ahead and open that second map called slope. So we're gonna do basically the same thing, but we're gonna use slopes and degrees instead of elevations. This is going to allow us to see where we can and cannot make buildings. So go back to your terrain tab, click plus, create custom material, and then name it 0-15. I'm gonna set mine to 35 with a data value of seven, which gives us gray wool and click okay. Click plus and repeat the same process. I'm going to use green wool as 16 to 25, lime green as 26 to 35, yellow as 36 to 45, orange as 46 to 59, and red as 60 plus. Once you've created your custom terrain layers, click on the globe, fill with terrain type, scroll down to your 0 to 15, check above 0 degrees, and click go. Now repeat this process for each new layer, adjusting the above number of degrees for each one. Now if we go to view, show 3D view, we can see that it matches with the slopes. Just be careful if you're using snow layers because it might falsely show up as a steep slope like this beach down here. Go to file, export, export as image file, name it something with the word slope in it and save it beside your elevation map. The building blocks of cities are made of neighborhoods. By having multiple neighborhoods that you're working on at the same time, you can use them as spaces to test similar ideas in the same space. So I did a bit of building off camera, ha, just kidding. I've been testing out new ideas for about six months in these couple of blocks here, but let's rewind to the start and follow the process. So I saw this relatively flat area and figured it would be a good spot to add some skyscrapers. So from there, that's what I did. Center Town is a neighborhood in the central plains of the island of Monstera, more towards the eastern coast. It uses a grid pattern of roads. It has the use of one-way streets, protected bike lanes, overhead greenery for shade, and people are able to walk around quite easily, but transit has not been implemented yet. It's a pretty dense neighborhood with a lot of offices and retail. There's also a handful of residential condos, similar to Vancouver or parts of New York. To keep the density relatively high, we're not gonna have very many gaps between buildings. A lot of the alleyways have been repurposed for pedestrians, and additional crosswalks have been added in place crossing the main blocks. In terms of the color theme, there is a lot of red and brown brick, black, gray, white, and blue glass. Small urban parks and pockets of space, along with a lot of first floor shops, make the area very nice to walk around. If you are on a creative server and have world edits, use an extra flat world to build some templates. Templates are the only way to finish an entire city project. The issue is that we don't want it to get super repetitive, so we need to be smart about how we design our templates. The two big type of templates are roads and filler buildings. Let's start with roads. Roads can be tricky, but here's the process that I follow for maximum efficiency. Create the road template, create an intersection template attached to the road template, paste in the road template above your terrain, use world edit to move the road templates into place and follow the shape of the terrain, and paste in trees and decorations. In center town, I'm following a New York style city block with my own twist. I referenced Google Maps and Google Street View to create these templates. City blocks are 87 by 160, including a seven wide walkway down the middle of each block. For this template, we have a wide two-way road with a divider in the middle and one-way streets on the longer side. On all sides, there are bike lanes protected by cobblestone walls spaced two blocks apart. Notice that we add grass strips on either side of the road templates and the green and lime wool represents where you can paste trees in afterwards. I'm using cube pack, so there's a lot of biome dependent textures, but since biomes are coded to be in one by one vertical columns, you can only have one biome per vertical segment. This means that if you have the plains biome over your road, your tree might have the wrong textures. What I do to prevent this is I change the biome of my road template to forest, aside from the spots where you need to have another biome for the markings on the road. After you have your two road templates, create an intersection between the two. I started by sketching bike and vehicle movements and worked from there. 
So now let's put our roads into the world and we can paste the city block in the air above where we want it. Fly around to make sure it's in the right place and then move it down so that the highest elevation matches the ground level. From here, use World Edit and move segments down section by section. Your terrain doesn't have to look super natural. You're going to be building on top of it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Keep your sidewalk level with the ground around it and indent your roads into the ground by one block. Let's go ahead and add our trees, although we shouldn't add all of the trees yet because we may need to remove some to access behind buildings from the road. Once you've added your handful of trees, add other decorations like street lights, benches, and garbage cans. There you go. We have the basic building blocks of a neighborhood, and now we can start to build. The second major template that we will be using to develop this city is filler building templates. Have you ever seen a completed Minecraft city? Because I haven't. Here's how to potentially come close to doing so. Filler building templates will be your savior and make it so your city isn't made of buildings that are all meant to stand out. This filler building is actually five and one. If we look at the one furthest left, we can see that it has four floors. The first has a commercial shop and a doorway. The doorway leads to a staircase going up and down. Both staircases lead to residential units on every floor, all the way up to the top. Each floor has cyan wool, marking potential layouts, but by not adding the walls, it allows you to customize floor plans if you want to. The second floor has a ceiling height of 4, and the third floor has a ceiling height of 5. The top floor has a dormer sticking out of the side, and with each variation of this build, there are different styles and two flat roofs. The reason the template is designed this way is so that we can expand and stack the second floor as many times as we want, or remove it entirely. The staircases line up too, so that you don't really have to do any editing before you make it taller. This is exactly how I made these buildings. Once you have one template like this, copy and paste it, and change the next one slightly so that you can mix and match as you paste them into your city. Now that you've designed one template, you can design a completely different facade, and all you have to do is just copy and paste it onto the old one. This way, just by creating one extra facade, you've created an entirely new build. And just like that, you went from one building to 100, and no one will have any idea. In the next episode, I'll be bringing you to the other side of the continent to explore and design the next step of Monstera. If that's something you're interested in seeing, feel free to subscribe and click the notification bell. If you'd like to visit Monstera, you'll need the Java edition of Minecraft with Optifine version 1.14.4. From there, you'll need to download CubePack and join the server IP on the screen. Once on the server, type forward slash warp Monstera. 